Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the nomenclature of amines, primarily the acyclic aliphatic amines. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this by going through several relatively straightforward examples, just to give you a sense of how amines are named. If you've watched some of my other if you've watched some of my other nomenclature videos, you know that there's a process that we go through that starts with identifying the parent chain, the longest continuous chain of carbons, then identifying the functional group that might alter the infix or suffix, and then starting to number things. And we're going to do that here as well. I'm going to start with this first compound, which has one, two, three, four carbon atoms in its parent chain. So this is some kind of derivative of butane. Okay. But the amine on butane changes the suffix of the molecule. So now we don't have butane, we have butanamine. Okay. And then we number the structure so that the amine, the position where the amine is, is at the lowest possible number, like we do for other examples. And this would be actually one butanamine because the uh, amine group is at the end of the chain. Now the amine group doesn't have to be at the end of the chain, which is what this next example is. So here we still have four carbons in a parent chain, but the amine is at carbon 2. So this is 2-butanamine. And as a reminder, uh, IUPAC absolutely accepts the, the nomenclature where you put the locant right in front of the suffix. That's perfectly okay too. Now, nitrogen atoms can have multiple bonds, and we can have alkyl groups hanging off of those nitrogen atoms. Now there is a systematic but less IUPAC-y way to name such things. So like we could look and say this is a methyl group and a propyl group. So we could call this methyl propylamine. This is similar to the way you might generate a common name for an ether. But we're going to work on uh, the IUPAC name and not this name. Get rid of that. So we're still looking for the parent chain, which is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. So even though this molecule here has four carbon atoms, only three of them are in a continuous chain, and this fourth one over here, this methyl group, is not part of it. It is a substituent. Okay. So the rest of this would be 1-propanamine. But now we need to figure out how do we call this methyl substituent. It's not attached to carbon atom 1. It's attached to the nitrogen atom in the, the amine. So we actually we will use the locant N We typically italicize this N, but you know, so I see sometimes people don't, but it, we typically italicize that N. So this is N-methyl-1-propanamine. So that means that we have a propanamine, a three-carbon chain, with an amine functional group on carbon 1, and that nitrogen in the amine has one of its hydrogen atoms switched out for a methyl group. Here is another molecule with two methyl groups and an ethyl group, so we could call this ethyl dimethylamine, or, di or dimethylethylamine, or I don't know which order sounds better, but we can also name this systematically as a derivative of ethanamine. Now in this particular case, I'm not numbering, I'm not going to provide one ethanamine, because in a two-carbon amine, the amine is always going to be in position one. But we do have to specify that the methyl groups are attached to the nitrogen. And so we would specify N 
and dimethyl ethyl ethanamine. Right? So it's, it's important to put both ends there. Right? Just like if we had 2,2-dimethyl two, two something, we wouldn't just list the two once. We need to list both twos because there are two methyl groups. We need to list both ends because I have two methyl groups here. In my next example, I'm going to work through uh, a molecule that has two amine functional groups. Um, as we follow our rules, we number this so that it has the lowest possible combination of locants. So that's having an amine at 1 and 3. We would convert this from propane to propane, I'm sorry, not propane, butane to butane diamine. And we'd need to put in the numbers. So we could write 1, 3, butane diamine. Or it's perfectly it's perfectly acceptable to put the 1, 3 right before the diamine part. And again, as with other di things, the E from butane comes back just to make it easier to pronounce. Okay. Once we start having other functional groups in the molecule that can change the suffix, the amine becomes a substituent. Um, oxygen, OH, alcohols have higher priorities than amine, and all the carbonyl functional groups have higher priorities than amine. And so we number this so that the alcohol has the higher priority, so the alcohol controls the numbering. And so the alcohol is going to be at carbon 2, and the amine is going to be at carbon 4. Right? Yes, it is possible to renumber this so that the amines at carbon 1 and the alcohols at carbon 3. That would be a lower combination of locants, but we have to number it so that the priority functional group has the highest, or the lowest possible locant first. Okay. So this is for amino is the name of the substituent to butanol. And before I move on to the final two examples, I actually want to do one more example like this that I didn't plan on when I started the video, but I've realized that I need to do now. I'm just going to, to do something very similar. No, I do not want to do this one, though. Here's a, a similar kind of structure, but not quite. Now there are alkyl groups on the nitrogen, but the, the amine functional group is still not the priority. This is still a substituent. So we have to figure out how we name this substituent to provide uh, the best name for the structure. In this case, we would put the amine at carbon atom number one out of three, because the other option puts it at three. Right? The alcohol is always going to be at two. So this is some kind of two propanol. With, with a one amino something, one substituent. Okay. When we name substituted amines as substituents, we just list the alkyl groups on that nitrogen as like their own little substituents of the nitrogen. So that's a dimethylamine group. So we would call this the dimethylamino substituent, right, because it has two methyl groups on it. If it had two ethyl groups on it, it would be the diethyl amino substituent. If it had an ethyl on a methyl, it would be the ethyl methyl amino, and then it can get complicated quickly. To wrap up my video, I just wanted to show you the structure of two heterocycles, one aromatic and one non-aromatic. And to just let you know that most heterocycles, while you can name them in a systematic way, tend to have common names that are so widely used that even the IUPAC recognizes them as acceptable. So, for example, this uh, five-carbon, five-membered ring aromatic um, uh, amine heterocycle has a name parole, and almost everybody uses that. Nobody tries to call it this. 1H1 is a 5 annuline or something horrible like that. And this molecule here 
instead of being called like azocyclohexane or other such ridiculous thing, uh, this molecule is called piperidine. And so sadly, there's a less systematic nomenclature in the heterocycles, so I'm not going to do a video on it. It's best to just go out on the internet and find uh, a reference that lists all of the common heterocycles and their common names. And so, um, you know, if you want to do that, go ahead. That's, that's great. I'm not going to create a video on it. But thank you for watching this video on the nomenclature of amines. Hopefully you've learned enough to, to be able to uh, generate some names for some simple amines. Thank you for watching.